Today we're going to discuss how to put or insert a Foley catheter on, any, on a female. For the, fa for the male component of it, we will discuss it during lab, but for purposes of demonstration and for you to see the steps that are important during the insertion, I'm going to use a female um, a patient. Um, a few things that you have to remember before. One, we have this checklist, like I mentioned before, on WebCT, so you can see all the key points and importance, and you can follow through with the demonstration. Two is just, again, going through the nursing process and how you gather assessment data. What do we do in assessment data for um, Foley catheter? Patient's medical history. What do you want to know in there? Um, have the patient had any issues regarding uh, the U system? Any type of bladder cancer? Uh, for the males, do they have any type of prost uh, prostate issues? That's going to create um, a challenge for you when you are inserting a Foley catheter on a male with uh, uh, enlargement of the prostate, and we'll discuss that in lab more, more detail. Um, when it comes to a female and male alike, do they have any history of uh, uh, sexually transmitted diseases? Do they have created any type of scarring, um, any type of ulcers or anything like that, that it's going to make it a little bit challenging for you to insert a Foley catheter? Um, the level of um, ability for the patient to help you, this is going to be a rather uncomfortable comfortable procedure that you want to make sure that the client understands, that they understand the expectations, what do you expect from them, what's going to happen, what they're going to feel, how they can help you to make it better and so forth. Um, and very important when it comes to Foley catheters, very, very important that I want you to always remember is the, um, the social um, issues that the client have, especially cultural considerations. Patients that are of Asian descent are extremely prudent. They don't like to be showing anything. They don't like anybody in the room. They will be a little bit more hesitant to help you and even to even go and do the procedure. Um, for other cultures, they actually want the opposite. They want their, uh, their significant other or somebody important, such as a mom or a dad, if it's a, a male, uh, to be in the room to assist you and be an emotional support for the client. Um, Hispanic cultural um, culture is also very uh, much into privacy and um, in my one or they might not be if they have mom and dad and sister uh, in there they might ask dad to leave if it's a female but mom and sister and the other sisters can stay in the room they can actually be a support system to them so that's very important for you to remember again now we're looking into um, the equipment for females, we usually have um, anywhere to um, 16 or 18 French. You're going to look at the size on the packet. Uh, this is another piece of information that you want to obtain from the medical history or the patient's chart. If they have a Foley before, what size they use. Because the more, um, the frequent they have Foley catheters placed, the, the large, it's going to be enlargement or urethra, and you're going to need a, a, big, a size bigger for insertion. Um, uh, males is usually anywhere from um, 18, 16 and 18, and females from 14 to 16. So this one that I'm gonna use here is the 16. Um, you're going to um, ch double check the order. You're going to into the patient's room. You're going to introduce yourself, um, identify the patient, check the ID band, explain the procedure to the patient, listen to them, ask them, have you had a Foley catheter insert before? How did it feel? Is there in a particular way that you want me to do it? And this is important because this is one of those procedures that there's no one specific way to do it. And what I mean by that is that I'm going to show you on the a normal fashion in the um, average one. It depends on the patient's condition. They will have to be slightly differences in how we position the client in order to insert a Foley, and that's okay. The main concept is sterility, that the patient is safe, that you are safe, and the procedure is done correctly, okay? So you have differences on that. You want to also make sure, like we mentioned before, to provide privacy, and you're going to position the client um, appropriately. This time, we're going to use Mrs. Shapiro again, and you remember that I mentioned she was 84 years old. She came into the hospital with a diagnosis of acute stroke. She had a tracheostomy placed. Now she's having difficulty um, uh, urinating, and the physician had ordered a Foley catheter to be placed for intake and output and monitoring of fluid status. Um, she is also has respiratory issues, so she's not going to be able to lie flat like your boot tells you to position the client. So she's going to be slightly up, and that actually is going to help for the client to relieve the bladder and actually um, get the urine out. So as I'm coming into the room, I'm doing all those things that I already mentioned. Because of her history of uh, stroke and so forth, I'm going to request 
um, my CNA to come in with me to help me with this procedure, and you're going to see that. So Mrs. Faye is going to be here and help us. So you come in your patient's room. You're going to wash your hands. You already have done all the things that you have mentioned, uh, mentioned before. So now we're going to position the client. Again, you see her that she has respiratory issues, so she's going to be slightly elevated, and that's going to help her with the uh, um, relief of the bladder. This is one of those skills that you want to also be comfortable for yourself. Remember, you're going to be bending over. So you want to make sure that the rails are down, that the bed is to a comfortable position for you because you're the one that's going to be doing that. And you have to remember to put the whole bed down before you leave. This point, this is more like a workable position for me. I want to make sure that the rail is down. I am going to... Make sure that I provide and keep privacy on my client, and I'm going to roll this all the way down, okay? I am going to bend her legs to expose the area, but at the same time, I'm going to keep her covered until I can, I have to absolutely have to open it. Make sure that it's nice and open, and my assistant is going to help me. And I'm going to prepare my kit. There's an opening into the kit. Take it out. You get the trash, and you want to position your kit right into the patient. If you do it in here, it's going to be very hard for you to do all this motion, correct? You want to be very close to your patient, okay? So how do you open a package? Review from 1115. You open this part away from you, and then side to side, and then towards you. This is going to be specifically challenged. You can ask your assistant to help you to maintain. You have that inch border. And remember all the things that you talked about in 1115 about that. This is one of the drapes that you will be using on your client. This is the one that goes under the buttocks. You take it out. You see the shiny part, okay? The shiny part is going to go down. So I want to make sure that I take it right underneath the kit, right underneath the patient, and have it there that it catches anything, okay? But at the same time, you want to maintain patient privacy. Now you take your sterile gloves. Okay, turn the gloves on. Make sure that your thumb is hitchhiking. Once you put them on, then you can fix them. Again, you have her here. Okay, now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask my assistant to um, go ahead and expose the client. Mrs. Shapiro, I just need to lift up your gown. We're just going to get you cleaned off and get that catheter in. Okay, so this is the, the drape that comes for the client. There is a little bit of a trick to put this together. You see how I'm grabbing it by my hands, just putting it this way. This is going to ensure that we can cover the area without you contaminating your gloves. Remember, you're still sterile. So I am just putting it this way and I just leave it so, okay? Just like that. I can fix it in here because this is my sterile area. My gloves are still sterile. Now I have moved this a little bit to create some kind of room, all this room. And you notice that now this part is actually on the sterile part and the uh, inch border is underneath it, maintaining sterility. I'm going to create um, move my equipment around to have a little bit more room. I take the cap off of that. Now, one of the things that there is a controversy about is, is the fact that, um, that they have some, some um, institutions will check the balloon before we introduce it. Some of them don't. And the uh, school of thought is that if you check the balloon first, you can actually create um, the stretching of, of the balloon itself. So when you're introducing the catheter, it's actually going to create a little bit more trauma on the client. So purposes of demonstration, I am not going to inflate the balloon, but what I'm going to do is to connect the, sa the um, saline into the area, into your port, so you have it available when you're going to um, inflate the balloon. Next thing I'm going to do, I am going to open all my packaging and have it available because once I use my non-dominant hand to clean the client, that hand no longer can I bring it back to my sterile field. So I am going to open up and make sure that everything is nice and ready for me. 
and I will put them into this side. I'm going to remove this so it'll be easier. Okay, and then we'll put it out this way so I can just grab it. Then I'm going to open my lubricant and I'm going to make sure that I put it all into this little reservoir here. I'm going to remove the package of my Foley. Again, you want to make sure that you maintain sterility of this area. And you're going to lubricate very nicely. Talking about four to five inches. Make it as comfortable as, as possible for the client. You see now everything is in a place. Everything is in a sterile um, place and you are not contaminating anything. I'm now I'm getting ready to insert. My non-dominant hand is going to come here and it's going to check my pad and I am going to expose and separate the labia. Now remember that that hand now cannot come in here at all. My hand is going to stay here. I'm going to clean all this area in here is considered sterile. So I'm going to get my first swab. Then you're going to separate and you're going to start away from you. Then you're going to do it close to you and then you're going to do it in the middle. It's one sweep motion from top to bottom towards the back. One of the other things that you want to make sure that you check is the allergies of the client. If the patient is um, allergic to betadine, you want to make sure that you use a betadine free packaging or if the patient is allergic to latex, that you have a latex free packaging. You want to do all that on your assessment part. So you're going to start from front to back first time and then you're going to discard right on the side. Next one, you're going to grab your second swab close to you and you're going to pull and you're going to discard and the last one you're going to do it down the middle, down the middle, it's all stuck in there. Now this is one of those things that you're going to find that's going to happen when you're doing this. So you got to be resourceful. Again in the middle and discard. Now I'm getting ready to insert. Make sure that you lubricate very well. You're going to tell your patient, Ms. Shapiro, I'm getting ready to go. Please bear down for me. And when she does, I'm going to introduce my catheter until I see urine coming out on the catheter. And you see it in there. You see the urine in the catheter coming through. Okay. Once you have that, you introduce one to two inches more. Now, in order for you to inflate the balloon, you cannot let go of this catheter at all. So what's going to happen is that the hand that you're holding the labia, you're going to use two, a couple of inches away, you're going to hold the catheter so, like, like so. And then with your dominant hand, then you're going to go ahead and inflate your balloon. If you don't do that, then the catheter is going to slip out. So you have put all the water in there. Then you want to give it a little tug, a little tug to make sure that's in place. Then you can let go, hold this, and then you're going to remove your syringe. You see the urine coming through that? You want to make sure that you put your client to a comfortable position, cover her up. You're going to rip this page off like that so that way you can just, you know, it's easier for you to clean. All, all right. Done, Mrs. Shapiro. Now you want to make sure that you put this tape over to the side of the leg with the commercial um, packaging. There's some things that you can use little Velcro or they don't have it, you can just put a tape. The point will be that you are going to give some room, some wiggle room in there so the client is not tugging on it and you're going to tape it in place. This part, you're going to make sure that it's going to be in a non-movable part of the bed and it's not going to be on the rail. Most of the hospital beds have a little um, hook that you can set that up. And so prop, the point will be that it has to be below the waist and it can have some room to drain. Again, your gloves, you know how to take them off. And you're going to gather all your supplies. Okay, and you put it into the red bag. Okay. And all your patient up, cover her back up. Ask to see if she has any discomfort, any cramping, because sometimes the bladder can spasm and the clients can feel a little cramping. 
and you want to make sure that you leave her on a comfortable position. Close the, um, put the rails up. You want to tell the client, wash your hands. Then you're going to take the client to um, what to expect. You know, if you, you're going to feel a little bit of pressure. Um, you're going to feel the need to void, but the catheter is actually collecting um, the drainage from the bladder directly. Um, you want to explain that that pressure that they feel is because the balloon is sitting right there in the opening of the sphincter, and uh, therefore just feel like pressure, like they have to void, but just to relax their muscles and their pelvic muscles so their bladder can, um, can empty. Um, but I don't want them to feel pain. I don't want them to feel uh, burning, discomfort, or anything like that. So those are the things that you want to uh, teach your client about telling you um, so you can do a little bit more or, um, assessment, more focus assessment, and find out what's going on. You want to document the size of the catheter that you use, um, any issues that you had during the procedure, how the patient tolerated, um, the color of the urine, um, if there was any uh, particles, blood, um, uh, anything that it was it's out of the ordinary that you want to make sure the physician and the other nurses know about. And then again, you want to come back half an hour later to reevaluate your patient, ask them how they feel, administer any medications as needed, and then make sure that you document. So that's how you will insert a Foley catheter on a female client.